Hi folks, I'm now carpal tunnel surgery plus seven days. I'm getting a little more use of my hand, a little bit more of my grip strength back, but still not nearly enough to operate a firearm. So what I'm going to be doing today, I'm out here at the range, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of work with non-dominant hand shooting. Um, you'll notice the shooting that I'm going to do is fairly close distance. Uh, I'm not going for long range target accuracy. This is strictly defensive shooting that I'm going to be doing. Uh, and again, probably not more than about 15 feet or so. Uh, in fact, I'll probably be doing some even closer in than that because I just want to work on using my non-dominant hand, getting my draw down, coming out, firing effective shots, and being able to feel safe uh, or secure in the knowledge that I could reasonably defend myself if I had fire using only my non-dominant hand. Now, due to the fact that my, my right hand, my dominant hand, is not fully healed yet, I can't really even use it to support the firearm as I'm shooting. So not only am I going to be doing non-dominant hand shooting, but it's going to be single non-dominant hand shooting. Whenever you're shooting one-handed, there's an important thing you have to remember, and that is to make sure you get your non-shooting hand somewhere out of the way. What I like to tell people is to give this hand a job. I don't care if as you draw or as you access your firearm, you put this in a pocket. Um, some people hold a belt buckle if they're wearing a belt. My favorite place is to have it right back here. As I draw, you're going to see me come up. This hand is going to be back, so I know it's out of the way. The reason I do that is there's been more than one shooter over the years who is practicing one hand shooting, drawing and shooting, and somehow or other they manage to come up one time and get this hand flopping around out here in front of the muzzle and put a bullet through their hand or take a finger off. So you want to make sure that you keep this hand somewhere out of the way as you're shooting so you don't have to worry about that. The firearms I'm going to be using today are my CS9, the 9mm semi-auto at the top there, and also my 342 revolver. The reason I'm using these two is because I get reasonably effective uh, performance from the ammunition as far as defensive applications go. Uh, also, they're in a package that's light and fairly easy to maneuver. Since I can only use one hand, I don't really want to use something heavy like one of my 1911s. And I also don't want something that generates a lot of recoil like you would get with my uh, firearms chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson or 45 or what have you. With these two, I think I can handle them effectively with my left hand only. Um, and still have a nice carry package and get reasonable um, effectiveness out of the cartridges. I'm going to start out with my 342. You'll notice that when I start to work, I'm going to be accessing it from my pocket. I'm going to start very close to the target, and the first time I'm going to start in close, and as I'm shooting, I'm going to be moving away. The reason behind that drill, obviously, is if you're way too close to someone and you feel that you have to defend yourself, you're actually firing as you're creating distance from the person. I've got four hits easily in the chest area of the target, all firing uh, unaimed with my left hand. Oh, by the way, my Frankenstein target is left over from the kids portion of our zombie shoot the other day. Uh, I thought no reason to waste a perfectly good target. It didn't have too many holes in it. Uh, but as you can see, my shots were one, two three, four, all as I was backing up. In the next drill, I'm again going to be accessing my 342 from my pocket. This time I'm going to be a little farther away, about 10 feet, at what I'd call an across the room distance, and I'll be able to actually come up and use the sights a little bit this time. On this one, my shots climbed on me a little bit. Again, I can't reinforce my grip. But I went one, two, three, and four. Okay, next I'm going to repeat those first two drills, this time with my CS9. You'll notice that I'll access this from a belt slide holster that I modified for a left hand carry. I am going to have to release the safety snap uh, as I draw the pistol. So this might be a little interesting to do it all with my left hand. Okay, I started out well here, nice center of the chest shot. For some reason I was pulling the shots low though as I was backing up. Now still, I've got shots on target, um, not the most effective shots in the world, but I also have four out of four shots on the bad guy's torso uh, as I'm backing up with my weak hand. Okay, next will be my across the room shots with my CS9. By the way, if you want to have some fun sometime, try reloading a magazine with only your non-dominant hand not using the other hand at all. Lots of fun.
Okay, that time I did what's generically called a failure drill. Some people call it a Mozambique, where you fire two rounds to the body and one round to the head. My body shots are both good, real good center chest shots. My head shot, I managed to pull off just a little bit. I'm going to try that one again, see if I can center that head shot a little. Okay, that time was better. Got two good body shots, and my head shot was about as centered as it can get. So, feeling better about my failure drill that time around. Okay, the next thing I'm going to work on is transition between firearms. Um, trying to reload when you can't use one of your hands, whether you're using a speed loader for a revolver or magazine for a semi-auto, is very slow and clumsy. What I'm going to do is what's basically called, or generically called, a New York reload. If you're not sure what that is, what it means is when your one pistol runs out, you simply drop that and draw a second pistol that's fully loaded. Um, what I'm going to work on is just firing a couple of shots with my revolver and then transitioning to my semi-auto. Um, I'm, when I, when I uh, finish with the revolver, I'm just going to lay it down on the table. If I was on the street, in my house or whatever, I would just drop it and draw a second firearm. Uh, out here, I'm not going to drop my guns on the range, so I'm just going to fire, put them down, and then draw the second one. We'll see how this goes. Okay, not bad. I managed to keep all my shots on the target. The very last shot I fired was a head shot. Pulled that one just slightly off to the left, but he'd still know something bad happened. So for transitioning and firing that quickly, I'm not feeling too bad. Again, keep in mind this is all with my non-dominant hand. Okay, I'm going to try that transition drill one more time. And here's the target again. Um, my shots are nicely centered this time in the chest. Everything is right in here, and even my head shot is looking a little better right there. Oh, by the way, there's a couple of things you can do to help yourself out when you're shooting with only your weak hand. One thing, if you can learn to shoot with both eyes open, even when you're using your dominant hand, it's a much quicker way to shoot. And if you find yourself in a situation where you have to use your weak hand, if you're shooting with both eyes open, you get to keep the exact same sight picture. You don't have to try to close your right eye and keep your left eye open and get a new sight picture. It's the same sight picture you're used to. Hand in hand with that, if you're shooting with both eyes open and you can't the pistol slightly inboard as you're shooting, that's going to help line it up with this dominant shooting eye and give you that sight picture you're used to. Instead of being straight up and down, it's going to be a little bit of an angle, but still at combat distances that's going to keep your shots effectively on target. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this just gives you an idea of what I'm working on since I can't use my dominant hand for a little while. Um, hopefully it gives you an idea if you do end up in a situation where you have to rely on your non-dominant hand you can shoot effectively. You do have to practice a little bit which is why I'm out here today and why I'm going to keep shooting a little bit even after the video is done. Um, if you enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up that helps me to know what you folks like and what to work on in the future. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more of the same, uh, please subscribe. Other than that, you all have a good day and good shooting. Bye-bye.